in the current series of Father Ted? Sorry? Are you in the current series of Father Ted? I am in the current series of Father Ted, yes. Playing the same character? Uh, Father Noel Furlong, yes, I'm back. Okay. What was that like? Uh, well, I'm doing it this week. So I haven't I haven't done the recording yet, but the uh, the, the rehearsals have been you know as always uh, you know just a laugh really. It is paid play you know just paid to muck around. So I'm having a very good time. You're not on location then? No, that they're quite careful. If you watch the series carefully, you'll notice that people who appear outside rarely appear inside. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I mean, occasionally somebody will. This series, I've noticed, it, they have, they're doing it more. Yeah. So obviously there's a bit more money not around. Yeah. Um, now, what else are you doing? Is it just a minute? Is that what you're doing? Or um, I do on Radio Four. I do loose ends and just a minute. And then on television at the moment, um, I'm doing Bring Me the Head of Light Entertainment on Channel Five. And that's what it is. Any chance of coming over to one of the BBC channels or ITV to do something? I mean, you never know. I mean, there's lots of, you know, um, talks. You know, I, I am in meeting hell, if you know what I mean. It would be nice to, to do something that was kind of, you know, seen by a larger public. But at the same time, Channel 5 has been very good to me. You know, so. Have you got any, I mean, did you, I don't know, did you start out doing stand-up or something? Uh, yeah, basically, sort yeah. of being a bit of an actor, then turned into comedy stuff, then turned into stand-up, yeah. and stand-up turned into, you know, telly work. Yeah. Have you had any kind of grand idea of what career, of what ideal job you want to do? You know, I should have, shouldn't I? And I don't. I don't. Uh, because... Because I, for, you know, for so many years I had no money at all, no job at all. Um, but suddenly, when you find yourself earning money and paying bills, you're so, you're so overexcited and delighted that the thought of some grand plan, you know, it seems ridiculous. I mean, maybe if I if I keep plugging away and making a living for the next, you know, four or five years, then I suppose that's the moment where you get a bit cocky, a bit confident, yeah. and come up with a grand plan, and you know. You're going to take over America, Australia, the world. Australia. <laughs> just Britain will do. Um, are you are you doing writing and stuff as well, or is it just the kind of acting and presenting stuff? Uh, it's acting and presenting. I write for myself. I don't write for anybody else. Um, I mean, I've, it's not like I've tried and didn't like it. I just sense in my bones I wouldn't like writing for other people. So I, I write for myself. How do you mean? What? Diaries or stuff? Or? No, no, no. I write my own stand up. Um, right. If I'm doing something like Bring Me the Head of Life Entertainment, yeah. we'll have a writer on board, Ian Patterson. Yeah. But I'll collaborate with him and help with my own links and write about my own language. Um, but, uh, you know, I think most, if, if you're a writer, you tend to write for other people. I, I just don't do that. What's it like working with Nicholas Parsons then? Oh, Nicholas is so sweet. He, you know, he's one of those people that, you know, basically his job is to sit there and to have the piss taken out of him. And he does that supremely well. But beyond all the piss take is a man who has worked with everyone, who has worked everywhere, done everything. So, you know, laugh as you might. Yeah. He's yeah. an age, does he? No. How does he do that? How does he do that? You look, you see, you know, 40 years ago, he looks the same. I do, I do believe that he hasn't had surgery, but he can shave his face smoother than any other man I know. Justin, what about Peter Jones? Uh, he must be interesting to work with. Peter? Peter Jones? Oh, Peter Jones is lovely. Mm. I mean, again, it's, that show, just a minute, is, 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 is a, you know, top treat kind of thing, because you get to work with these people who are national treasures, mm. and you work with them, okay, they're obviously, in the audience's eyes and in your own eyes, they are, you know, above you. But on some sort of level, you're on a par with them. You know, you are on the same panel they are. And it sounds so pathetic and showbiz, but you do sort of pinch yourself, quite believe that, you know, oh my God, you know, something's gone horribly wrong. Graham Norton has ended up in this program. But surely it's good because, I mean, I'm sorry having a clue is, is good, but it's not really a game. But it's, there's no, I mean, 
just a minute is a, is a real game. You're all equal, aren't you? For that one minute, you've all got the same chance. You can all blow it the same way. I mean, it makes it more exciting, doesn't it? Well, funny. Well, I tell you, I'm sorry I haven't a clue. Um, funny enough, Bring Me the Head of Life Entertainment, Top Town 5, is produced by the same producer as I'm sorry I haven't a clue. Yeah, uh, John Naismith. Right. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry I'm having a clue. But I would turn it down because it's too frightening. I couldn't do that. Some of it's scripted, it must be, surely. Oh, no, no, absolutely. But, you know, but you've got to. You've got to write it. Yeah. Some, you know, yeah. those guys come up with those lines, yeah. and that's the great thing about Just a Minute, is that it is improvised, it is just dreamt up, and some. And if you fail, somehow, you know, if you're absolutely unfunny and terrible, somehow it's, it would, to my mind, it would feel less humiliating. Yeah than failing on, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. And then you all, you all kind of work together, don't you? You, can, you kind of help each other out. I mean, if something's going on too long, you oh, make a funny challenge you know, or something. Or, or a team, there's a real team of spirit. No, there is absolute team spirit, and that's the thing that, uh, listening on the radio, Nicholas's role doesn't come across, yeah. because Nicholas silently orchestrates a hell of a lot of that, you know, and you, you, you don't you don't ever, you know, well you can't see it, it's the radio, but if you ever go into a recording and see how he, he'll tell people, he'll encourage people to buzz in, he'll encourage people to hold off, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so the plan is the future, just to keep doing what you're doing until you can stand back and think, well now I can have some chance in my own sort of destiny. Yes, I shall keep going, I shall keep going um, as I am. Just suddenly one day I go, oh my God, the castle is mine. And, uh, and then I'll stop. I know, I'm trying, I have no idea, I have no idea. You just, you know, because television is changing so much all the time. There are more and more channels, everything, you know, shifting, production companies are sprouting, heads of departments are changing. So for me, kind of up and coming in television right now is a very, is a, it seems like, I, it seems like a very weird time to be um, up and coming because everything's in a, in a state of chassis as a character in the Sean O'Casey yeah. to play said, there's an Irish reference. So you haven't been called the new Kenneth Williams then? Uh, no, no one right. has said that. Okay. No one has said that. That's just me. Right, okay. They're, they're Thank you very much.